In the traditional motion picture story, the villains are usually defeated. The ending is a happy one. I can make no such promise for the picture you're about to watch. The story isn't over. You and the audience are part of the conflict. United Nations headquarters, which was built in 1945 and financed largely by John D. Rockefeller. Inside UN headquarters is an ominous meditation room. The custodian of the meditation room is Lucis Trust Company. At one time, the Lucis Trust was located at 666 United Nations Plaza and was formally named Lucifer Publishing Company. The Rockefeller-funded UN Meditation Room is 33 feet long and 18 feet wide. 18 feet is 6 plus 6 plus 6. The small dimly lit windowless room was built in the shape of a pyramid that is laying on its side. At the center of the room is a four foot high black casket shaped stone slab which weighs 6.5 tons and is extremely magnetic and rests on a concrete pillar. The pillar descends beneath the floor into the bedrock and taps into the earth's hyperdimensional energies to induce a state of altered consciousness. Not far from the meditation room is the United Nations Security Council chamber. This is the emergency room of the UN, where the world leaders meet when there is a threat to peace. They decide the fate of nations. Notice the giant mural that towers over the Security Council room. The central focus of the UN mural is the phoenix bird that has risen. The phoenix bird is a symbol of Lucifer. Egyptians believe that the phoenix symbolized a god who rose to heaven in the form of a morning star like Lucifer after his fire immolation of death and rebirth. Notice that the phoenix bird is not standing above his own ashes. He is standing above his old skin. Like a snake, he has shed his old skin and is revealing himself as God at the center of the mural. At the top left, there is a church steeple without a cross. The missing cross symbolizes the death of Christianity. Below, a woman receives the rays of the sun god, while the man in front of her plays Pan's flute. To their right are two pyramid symbols and people joined together by a long blue serpent-like claw. Below the risen phoenix, a sword is driven through a dragon beast. This represents the killing of all beliefs and religions that depicted Lucifer as a beast. The New World religion worships him as beautiful. Behind the phoenix, the ghostly figures of the walking dead are stepping into a void. They symbolize depopulation. On the right panel, the pale horse from the book of Revelation is the bringer of death to humanity through weapons, hunger and disease. The man is releasing him. The chained black man represents slavery, while the top panel of the mural shows a technologically advanced white race who control industry, art, and science. In this post-apocalyptic mural, the military man standing on the tail of the beast represents worldwide military power. He tips his helmet to the elite, who are climbing out from underground cities where they safely hid from the apocalypse. In the main oval panel above the phoenix bird, a woman is holding flowers. She is the bride in a wedding ceremony. Could the newlywed symbolize William and Kate? The serpent in human form is tempting the little girl Eve who accepts the apple. On the right side of the top panel, a reptilian green creature with scaly skin is dancing with a naked woman while musicians entertain him. The general message of the UN's Phoenix Rising mural is that humanity is stepping into a new Luciferic reality. Beneath this disturbingly prophetic mural, world leaders make global decisions that affect the lives of nearly 7 billion people. An occult organization that currently has its headquarters within the United Nations. 
The objectives of this organization, Lucia's Trust, have been codified and embodied in the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights and in the United Nations Charter. Alice A. Bailey, the founder of the quote organization Lucia's Trust, developed 10 strategies to establish a new world order. These strategies are, number one, push God out of the schools. If the people grow up without reference to God, then they will consider God irrelevant to day-to-day -day life. They know that they have to go after the very things that the Judeo-Christian tradition honors and values. Uh, morality, belief in God, faith, the importance of family, the sanctity of life, uh, the sanctity of marriage. Number two, break the traditional Judeo-Christian family concept. Break communication between parents and children so that parents can't pass on spiritual values to their children. Do this by pushing excessive child rights. They are extremely anti-parent. It, it, it is an effort to get the children to abandon the values of their parents. Through the propaganda they teach them, seven hours a day for 13 years, and even longer if they attend college. We are losing most of our children to the other side because of the anti-American, anti-God, and anti-free enterprise rhetoric they are filled with in the government schools. Number three, remove restrictions on sex. Sex is the biggest joy, and Christianity robs people of this. People must be freed to enjoy it without restrictions. But their game right now is to corrupt the 15 to 25 year olds or less. And right now they're down in the first grade with Heather has two mommies, daddy's roommate, uh, gay pride parade. And now by eighth grade they'll pass out condoms and school colors because that's so patriotic. Number four, since sex is the greatest expression of man's enjoyment of life, man must be free to express sex in all its forms. Homosexuality, orgies, even bestiality are desirable so long as no one is being abused or harmed. We also see immorality being promoted through our schools, the kind of sex ed curriculum that is being used and paid for with our tax dollars would shock most parents. Number five, people must be free to abort unwanted children. If a man can have sex and then live without the consequences, then the same should be true for a woman too. They are for the entire feminist agenda, uh, starting with abortion on demand, the tax-funded abortions. Number six, every person develops soul bonds. So when a soul bond wears out a person, must be free to divorce. When one starts to grow, one must be free to get together with that person, even if they are married. Their entire purpose was to detach our culture from any moral anchors whatsoever. Number seven, diffuse religious radicalism. Christianity says Jesus is the only way. Diffuse this by A, silencing Christianity, and B, promoting other faiths, the creation of interfaith harmony. At its core, it's a rebellion against God and God's uh, laws. And that's what the battle is about. That's what the assault is, is on. That's why Christianity is, is, uh, is a target. Number eight, use the media to influence mass opinion. Create mass opinion that is receptive to these values by using TV, film, the press, etc. Note well. What Western believers call normal in the African church would be pornography. They look at what holds society together, they understand it, but they don't want that. They want change, and they will subvert and rot every good and decent thing we believe in. Number nine, debase art in all its forms, corrupt music, painting, 
poetry and every expression of the heart and make it obscene, immoral, and occultic. Debase the arts in every way possible. They've done everything in their power to dumb down our children, undermine our families, rewrite our history, and promote obscenity and immorality everywhere that they can. And number 10, get the church to endorse every one of these nine strategies. Get the church to accept these principles and to say they're okay. Then legal ground is given for these values to get a foothold. It wasn't until I was watching an old film from World War II that I realized what the left has been doing in America to pit the poor against the rich, blacks against whites, and the young against the old is the same tactic Hitler used to disunify Germany. You see, they knew that they were not strong enough to conquer a unified country. So they split Germany into small groups. They used prejudice as a practical weapon to cripple the nation. Remember that when you hear this kind of talk. Somebody is going to get something out of it. And it isn't going to be you.